If you've been wondering what amulets are the best and worst in Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, then you've come to the right place. With the extremely vague descriptions for the majority of amulets, it can be hard to gauge how they actually perform, but thankfully for you I've put all 36 amulets to the test and ranked them so that you can run the perfect build for your playstyle while exploring Mount Koth. Some of these amulets are downright disgusting and others are hot garbage that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. A quick note on amulets in general before we jump in. Most amulets, with the exception of the ones purchased in the depths from the scrapper for Xerxes or the King Jamshid amulet, all can be upgraded twice to enhance their effectiveness. I ran all my tests using plus two amulets, so keep this in mind when referencing my numbers. If you don't have the time crystals to shell out for the plus two versions of everything, you can typically expect the effectiveness of each amulet to be about one third or two thirds of the potency at rank zero or plus one respectively, compared to the plus two amulet. First up is Blade Dancer. Each rank gives you an additional attack to tack on to the end of your standard 3 hit combo, going up to 6 hits on the plus 2 upgraded version. This is definitely useful for anyone who is less interested in executing more complex combos and just wants to button mash until the enemy in front of them is dead, but I actually think it's a bit of a noob trap. It's very rare that you can get away with 6 consecutive basic attacks in a row against most enemies, and you build up significantly less Athra by only doing basic attacks. I'd recommend learning some more general combos for launching enemies up into the air and then holding them there before slamming them into the ground to stunlock them as long as possible while maximizing Athra buildup and damage. For larger enemies where that's not possible, you're going to have better results just dashing under them or jumping over them in most cases and then attacking them from behind in smaller short bursts, as it's pretty rare to get the full 6 hits off unless they're in a wind up animation for some other attack. Overall, I'd say it's a C tier amulet that warrants use in more casual, spam basic attack recline gameplay, but otherwise it won't be especially useful. Elusive Water allows you to dodge on the spot by holding up and pressing your dash button, which will slow time briefly, put you behind your enemy, and then deal damage to them. Honestly, I'm not really sure I understand the value of this because it's a way higher risk move that's not as easy to pull off as a simple dash under, and if you just dashed under an enemy anyways, you'd be able to smack them from behind for almost the same amount of damage that it does. It does look flashy and does add another dimension of play, but I'd say it's not worth two amulet slots when you could go for more general damage boots that apply across the board. Not to mention the fact that even at max level, the damage it does is nothing special. It's not useless and it does have that time slowing ability, so I'd say it's worth at least putting into the low B tier if anything. Next up is Voidblade, and this is definitely one of my favorite amulets in the game. This is the Persian cousin of Grubberfly's Elegy from Hollow Knight, and it allows you to send an energy wave in the direction of your attack to deal damage that scales up to a pretty significant amount of damage at max rank. You do have to wait a certain amount of time before you can cast another, but at max rank it's only about 2 seconds. This is great for smacking enemies or destructible objects from a distance without having to use up arrows, and it does way more damage than arrows as well. It also can't be deflected back at you, which is a big plus over arrows. In boss fights, you're also going to be proccing this constantly since most of the boss fights revolve around short exchanges between you and the boss getting your respective hits in, allowing this to always be recharged between your exchanges. Overall, this amulet shines in almost all stages of the game, and I ran it for the entirety of my playthrough once I picked it up. Easily an S tier for me. Highly recommend upgrading this as soon as you can as well for that reduced cooldown. Next we have Verathranga's Wrath, which increases Athra Surge attack damage, and I'm honestly not sure how good this is from an exact numbers perspective, but it feels like it's boosting damage by around 50-75% to at max rank, which is honestly pretty solid. Against general mobs, this isn't particularly useful, as even most level 1 Athra Surges will kill an enemy unless you're on a mortal difficulty, but against bosses, this could easily be the difference between victory and a failure. For boss fights, I say this is an A. For general exploration, I'd say a C. Then we have Turning Wind, which is actually a pretty legit amulet considering how often I found myself naturally doing slide attacks, and at max rank this does double the damage you would normally do, and since it only takes a single amulet slot, this is definitely a contender for general gameplay use. For boss fights, there's also a place for it too, so I'd say for cost to value ratio, it's pretty high and that it's a fair A tier amulet. Indomitable Spirit is insanely powerful, but it's a heavy risk to reward gamble to use. When you're at low HP, which seems to be anything lower than 20% of your max HP, then you'll activate the effect for any melee attack you perform, dealing what seems to be at least double damage at max rank. This includes dodge attacks and in fact stacks multiplicatively with amulets like Turning Wind, doing 4 times damage which is kind of nuts. If you want to be able to properly make use of this amulet with lower risk, then you could definitely pair it with the Dragon King amulet to have a backup get out of jail free card, or some of the other damage reduction amulets. 
of course, you're giving up a ton of amulet slots to run Dragon King in tandem with this, so these might be better reserved for boss battles only. Since it's hard to keep this effect active, especially at lower max HP, I call this a B tier for general players as you're more likely to get yourself killed trying to stay at low HP threshold, but if you're doing some crazy no hit run, then this is a no brainer S tier. I think it's worth moving on to Evil Eye Amulet next since it falls into the same vein as Indomitable Spirit. This time you get a large melee attack power boost, but your health bar gets completely removed and you will die after taking any damage. You also seem to only get around a 50% damage boost, so it's not actually as good as Indomitable. However, they do stack together for a 250% damage bonus, and Indomitable will be permanently active while Evil Eye is equipped, since your health is treated as essentially being zero. You can also benefit from the Dragon King amulet, which will allow you to take one single hit without dying. Again, this is a massive risk reward amulet that is probably only useful to speedrunners and no hit runners. If you're just a casual player, you probably have no business running this unless you want to just give it a whirl for a little bit because it would be fun, but it's probably an F tier amulet for most and then an S tier for those select crazy few. Next up is Arslan's Glory, which increases melee damage by about 50% at max rank as long as you maintain full HP. I'd say this is arguably better than Indomitable because it's much safer and easier to maintain full HP than low HP obviously, and it only takes one amulet slot. Clear drawback here being that taking any damage instantly nullifies the effect, and then you have to decide whether you want to use one of your very limited healing potions to top up to get the effect back, or accept that you won't have it back up again until your HP drops low enough to milk max health out of a health pot dose. There is an amulet we'll talk about later that does regen your HP, so that is a good option to pair with this if it is something you're thinking of running. I'd say this is probably a B tier amulet unless you pair it with the HP regen one, at which point I would say it probably is an A. Honestly though, once you familiarize yourself with most enemies, it's not too difficult to stay at full HP most of the time, or at least to keep it topped up. So I'd say this is actually an A tier amulet for the most part since it's only one amulet slot. Directly following this is the Will of Rotsum, which is a constant damage bonus to standard sword attack. My interpretation of this is that it means any non athra related melee attacks, so none of those charged athra attacks where you hold your attack button and then release it. In general, the majority of your attacks will not be those charged attacks, so you will actually get quite a bit of use out of this amulet in standard exploration and boss fights. The damage bonus is pretty similar to Arslan's Glory as well and appears to be around 40-50%. to 50%. I'd say this is also an A tier amulet, though it does take one extra amulet slot to use. The Agony Amulet is pretty garbage in my opinion. It says that it creates a large explosion that deals a great amount of damage when an enemy is killed, but it's really not worth giving up two amulet slots for how it performs. It's very rare that you'll ever have more than three enemies on your screen at any given time, and most of the time they're not all clumped up into one spot. When this explosion goes off, you have to be very close to it for it to actually register the damage on an opponent, and those scenarios are so infrequent that it's just not worth justifying using this amulet at all. I'm pretty sure I've only ever had a couple instances of there being more than five enemies on the screen at once across the entirety of the game. You got better options here. I actually think this is an F tier amulet. So White Peacock actually really surprised me and this amulet is kind of nuts at max rank against enemies that don't frequently block your attack. You shoot five arrows at slightly reduced damage while only expending a single arrow shot with this amulet equipped. This ends up being close to four times more damage per shot than you would get from a normal arrow, assuming you can hit all five of those on your target. This is pretty easy to weave into a combo and you can shoot from a distance and still land about three of those arrows at a time as well. At three amulet slots, it's quite expensive to run, but you can pair it with Arash's arrowhead for even more damage, which makes for a fun range focused playstyle. The only trouble will be maintaining enough arrows for exclusive use, though it's not uncommon to stumble across arrow resupply racks, and enemies will drop more arrows the lower your quiver is. I wouldn't really recommend using this until you have your quiver above 25 shots though to make it worthwhile. I would say this is an S if not for the fact that you can run out of ammo quite easily, so I'll throw this into the A tier. We'll quickly go over Arash's arrowhead now too since it's related, and this is simply a 20 to 25 percentish boost to arrow damage at max rank. At only one amulet saw, it's a pretty cheap amulet to run, but I would only consider doing this if you're going to pair it with White Peacock, otherwise save the slot for something better. In standard play, I'd say this is a D tier amulet, but a no brainer with White Peacock. The final range related amulet is Blazing Kestrel, which is a very niche use amulet that I think is actually quite useful in many boss fights. 
Your arrows apply a burn effect to anyone hit that ticks damage for around 9 seconds at max rank, which is great for boss fights where there are large gaps between being able to land a full combo. While you're busy dodging enemy attacks, you can sneak in a shot to keep the burn damage going for almost the entirety of a fight, which can chunk a solid amount of a boss's HP over the full fight. The exception to this being bosses that can deflect arrows back at you, because this can be horrifically bad as it'll actually apply the burn effect to you, and it is devastatingly strong. In those exclusive circumstances, you definitely don't want to run this, unless you're certain a deflection won't occur. I won't spoil which bosses can do this, but you'll find out pretty quickly if you're running this against them. Definitely a boss favorite amulet and not really worth running in exploration play. If you don't have all the other amulets that are strong in boss fights, I would definitely consider running this. And it's probably an A tier amulet for boss fights, but otherwise in general exploration, it's definitely a D. Zervon's voice is a pretty mid amulet that slows down time at the expense of using up Athra while aiming your Chakram. It's kind of nice as it basically guarantees that you can get a parry off if an enemy is about to attack you, but otherwise you're going to be waiting a long ass time for that to happen and you'll be out of Athra pretty quick. Not a big fan of this one, and it costs two amulet slots to use. There is a small use case for pairing this with Chakram Tempest since there is synergy there. This is definitely a D tier amulet though, no question. Speaking of which, Chakram Tempest is actually hilariously strong against enemies if you get the timing right with this. When you throw your Chakram, you can press the ranged attack button again to have it deal AoE damage at its current position for a couple of seconds depending on the rank, and it does an insane amount of damage if it's fully contacting a target for the full duration. The only tough thing about this is getting the timing right and making sure that your enemy actually gets caught in the AoE, and it leaves you open and vulnerable to attacks for about a second as you line up the shot. Once it's going though, you're free to wail on that enemy at the same time, and you can actually parry deflect your Chakram back and reactivate it again. So when you get the technique down, you will be doing a ton of extra damage. Overall, it's super strong. It's great for opening up fights. You can use it to take out weaker enemies from a distance without using your arrows up. It's just an all around really strong amulet if you can use it properly. I think it's definitely an S tier amulet in the right hands. Next up, we have Dragon King, which I briefly referenced to, and I want to think of this as another noob trap amulet. It's easy to acquire early game, and it does save you from a single killing blow while restoring some HP, but I really do believe the best defense is a good offense in games like this. The three amulet slots you're giving up is an insane amount of damage potential that could have instead dropped your enemy and end the fight right then and there, just to have a single get out of jail free card that is at best equivalent to about one HP pot, if we're being realistic. It can be nice to be sitting at one bar of HP and then take a giant attack that gets absorbed and pops the Dragon King amulet, but it's honestly just too expensive to run. The only place I can recommend this in good faith is when you're pairing it with Indomitable Spirit or with Evil Eye because those are places where you'll actually get a lot of value out of the get out of jail free aspect. Because it restores such a paltry amount of health and costs three amulet slots, I don't think it'd be right to rank this anything higher than a C. But if you are really struggling and for some reason don't want more damage to speed up a kill and just want more survivability, go ahead, feel free to run this, but I really think it's a noob trap amulet. Starving Heart, on the other hand, is what I actually believe is the best amulet in the entire game for casual players and anyone doing extensive exploration bouts. You restore health at the expense of decreased melee damage, but it's vague as to how much of your damage suffers and how much you heal. From my testing, you definitely don't lose any more than about 20% damage, and it honestly feels closer to only about a 10% damage debuff. But you get the insane perk of healing one health notch every 10 seconds. This is a fairly easy amulet to obtain early on in the depths for a few Xerxes, and it doesn't need to be upgraded either. Considering how small your health pool is and how limited your potion supply is in about the first two thirds of the game honestly, this amulet is even more valuable earlier on. No more running back to whack whack trees to refill your potions if you slip up a little too much in combat. You can just regen on the way to the next set of enemies. And for those tougher platforming challenges, you'll basically never have to use healing pots again. I would grab this as soon as you possibly can and consider running this long into the late game, if not all game, with the mild exception being if you find yourself not needing the heals and wanting to trade it off for some extra offensive power. Mount Damavan is a very powerful amulet that reduces melee damage by 50% at max range, which is actually nuts. Now, not every attack is melee, obviously, but the vast majority of damage you're probably going to take during the game will in fact be melee attacks, especially in general exploration as they're the most difficult to avoid and the most commonly unparryable attacks where you'll slip up. 
The only drawback here is that it's a three cost amulet, but the fact that it basically doubles your effective health against melee attacks at least makes this a very good amulet that would also be very strong to pair with Indomitable Spirit. I'd say it's not quite an S tier amulet, but it's gotta be at the top of A tier in my mind. Now Shield of Mithra is no doubt the best amulet in the entire game, even more so than some of the other S tiers we've covered so far. When you parry an attack, you slow time for 3 seconds, with the AoE becoming larger with each progressive rank. This is a free pass to absolutely wail on your enemies and rack up some massive damage, especially during boss fight. It can be awkward at first to prepare yourself for the next incoming attack after the slow-mo wears off, because it kind of messes with you trying to figure out when the slow-mo is going to end, but as long as you count to 3 as soon as your parry lands, you should be able to prepare yourself for the slow-mo to go back to normal. I don't think I ever took this amulet off once I got it, and it was the first thing I fully upgraded. S plus amulet by a mile. Gleaming Lion is another excellent amulet that doubles your Aether buildup at max rank when you successfully parry an attack. This is great for being able to spam low level Aether Surges, or to drop level 2 and 3 Aether Surges that act as heals mid-combat. If you're not somebody who parries often, this will probably not make your shortlist, but definitely give it a go if you're a fan of parrying. Solid A tier here. Rikshana's Gift is an amulet that I initially thought would be extremely OP, as it's easy to acquire early on, and it restores health for every successful parry, but even at max rank, the amount of health you get is kind of measly. The earlier you are into the game, the more useful this amulet will be, since the healing amount is fixed, meaning the percentage of your max HP that it restores will be higher early game before you acquire more Soma Tree Petals to boost your HP. For two amulet slots, you're probably better off just running Starving Heart for the same cost, and then accept the tiny damage debuff that it provides. It's good, but it's not great. B tier for this one. Shockwave is pretty underwhelming and does about the same damage as two normal attacks when you destroy your Shadow Teleport marker, but it's extremely clunky to use, and your enemy basically needs to be standing on top of it to take damage from it. Not worth the investment to upgrade in my opinion, and for two amulet slots you have much better options. D tier. Divine Spear, on the other hand, was shockingly better than I expected it to be, and it is much easier to weave into your combat combos. When you teleport back to your shadow using the teleport power, you create a laser beam of damage from where you were standing to your shadow location that deals a pretty significant chunk of damage, equivalent to around 3 basic attacks at max rank. This requires a little bit of positioning to work effectively, but it does induce a stagger on your enemy, and it's often useful for setting up a quick return to a boss's position to dish out damage in boss fights by teleporting. This could be a fun one for boss fights to try out if you're good at lining up the beam. This is a solid B tier amulet. Eye of Destiny is a personal favorite of mine simply because I appreciate information on how strong my character is. While equipped, enemies will have a life bar above them when you hit them. It only cost one amulet slot to run, and it made things a lot simpler knowing what HP an enemy was at so that I could adjust my combat playstyle accordingly. Easy S tier for people who like information, but if you want a more blind approach where you have to gauge your power yourself, then you can just pass on this, it's not necessary at all. The only time I ever took this amulet off was for boss fights since you always get an HP bar for them. Bard's Fortune is an amulet that depending on when you pick this up, it can definitely be worth it to upgrade. At rank 1 you get around 20% more time crystals from enemies, and at max rank you get about 50% more. Now it costs I think around 11 or 1200 time crystals to fully upgrade it from zero, so you'll need to kill a few hundred enemies before it pays for the upgrade cost and starts actually netting you more money. That said, if you're aiming to get all amulets max rank, then run this the second you find it. For one amulet slot, I found it pretty easy to justify keeping on during exploration and even boss fights as well. For a true 100% everything completionist, it's an S tier no doubt, but otherwise I would probably either just run it without upgrading it, or don't run it at all and it's probably around a B tier amulet. Ekbatana Seal is another personal favorite of mine that increases the distance at which you can collect time crystals. It just makes the gameplay so much smoother not having to worry about standing right on the corpses of my enemies to pick up time crystals, and it's especially useful in more vertical focused areas of the game where the crystals will often fall far below you or into the void. With this bad boy equipped you'll miss next to no time crystals in your playthrough, so I'd say this is worth keeping on through the entirety of your gameplay, with the exception of boss fights where you can definitely swap this one out. S tier quality of life amulet, F tier for boss fights, it's useless there. Four Royal Stars is another combat focused amulet that gives you bonus damage while in air with melee attacks. Now, the damage bonus on this one isn't nearly as hefty as some of the others, only boosting damage while airborne by about 25% at max rank. The fact that you have to be in the air for this to work makes it even less compelling than some of the other amulets we've looked at as well. 
That said, if you do have the slots to fit it into your loadout, then you can always take it for the extra boost, but I'd say it's much lower priority than Arslan's Glory or Will of Rotsam. If you didn't purchase the deluxe version of the game or you're not playing through Ubisoft Plus, you won't have the Prosperity Bird amulet for finding hidden items and chests, but the King Jamshid amulet will at least help you find some treasure chests along your journey. If you're planning to go in blind and hunt for most collectibles, then you'll want to get this guy equipped as soon as you've unlocked it. If you have the Prosperity Bird, however, there's no real need to double down. For general exploration, as chests will either contain an amulet, or if there are time crystal chests, they'll always have 200 time crystals in it, which is quite important for upgrading your gear across your playthrough. I'd say it's a fair A tier amulet since it only costs one amulet slot to run, and there are quite a few chests hidden behind breakable walls that are very easy to miss unless you're unless you're very meticulous in your exploration. The Blessing Amulet is a single slot cost amulet that artificially boosts your max health whenever you rest at a whack whack tree. Ranks 0, 1, and 2 increase it by 1, 2, and 3 health notches respectively, and while it has some value earlier on since your max HP is very low, I still think this is a trash amulet that should be replaced by more quality of life or damage focused amulets. Once those notches get wiped, you will not get them back until you rest at a whack whack tree again, making it at best a fraction of a health potion worth of HP. This is probably one of the worst amulets in the game, and I think it's fine to call it an F tier, honestly. The Wolf Bride amulet is kind of weird and doesn't seem to function reliably, at least from my experience. You're supposed to build up Athra while taking damage, but I've had instances where only the first couple hits get registered, then it stops giving the full amount, and others where it works normally. For some reason, when I've paired it with Mount Damavand, I've had the most successful results. The biggest plus about this amulet, however, is the fact that not only is it giving you Athra, but it's preventing the removal of Athra for taking damage. If the amulet is functioning properly, then this is actually quite useful in boss fights and can give you 2-3 full Athra bars later into the game by the time you fully drain your HP pots. I'd say it's an A tier amulet for boss fights when it works, but otherwise it's probably a C tier for spotty performance. It's not half bad during general exploration as well. Speaking of other Athra buildup amulets, the IR amulet is pretty insane and at max rank it pretty much doubles your Athra buildup for every successful attack. I did a few tests and it does behave kind of weird as arrow hits don't seem to have nearly as noticeable an effect as stringing a big combo together. Against these two test subjects I was able to get close to one and a third Athra bars versus around just 70% of one without the IR amulet equipped. This is an incredibly powerful amulet and I would strongly advise running this for boss fights as Athra Surges make up a giant portion of damage in those fights when used correctly. Athra Surges also act as pseudo healing potions during exploration so this amulet shines just about everywhere so it's definitely an S tier choice. I saved these 5 amulets for last and I generally want to say they're all doo doo and should never be used but that isn't quite fair as there are very select use cases for each. Hardiness, Horn Viper, Holy Fire, Thunder Charm, and Frost Charm all reduce the damage or the duration of a specific environmental effect. I'm sure you can guess what each one of those does by the name, with Hardiness reducing all environmental type damage. As you'll find, many of the specific regions in the game feature one status type more prominently, and so these amulets do serve a purpose, but because they're all two cost amulet slots, with the exception of Horn Viper being a one cost, you're way better off swapping in a different amulet instead. I would say just swap in Starving Heart since its regen effect would likely make up for all the additional damage you would have taken from those status effects and environmental damage so there's really no need to ever run these if you have that, plus more combat amulets is certainly favored over these. Because they're such high cost amulets for such a minimal benefit, I would definitely put 4 of these into the F tier with the exception of Horned Viper being at least worthy of the D tier since it's only a 1 cost and Poison is quite annoying and it's an area that you travel to early on in the depths, so I think D tier is at least reasonable for that alone. You can definitely save yourself the thousands of time crystals in Xerxes not upgrading these. And we have made it to the end of all 36 amulets, so here's a quick summary of the results and my personal favorite loadouts for bosses and for general exploration once you have the maximum 12 amulet slots to play with. For exploration, I run Void Blade, Starving Heart, Shield of Mithra, Eye of Destiny, Ard's Fortune, Ekpatana Seal, IR Amulet, and Prosperity Bird. I think it's the perfect build for convenience, quality of life, getting all the time crystals you need to fully 100% the game, and then obviously finding collectibles. For boss fights, I'd swap to Void Blade, Turning Wind, Arslan's Glory, Blazing Kestrel, Wolf Bride, assuming it's working correctly during the fight, 
Shield of Mithra, and IR Amulet. Totally personal preference on my part, there are many ways to go about this depending on your playstyle, but this is just what works for me. If you enjoy game analysis content like this, then consider subscribing for deep dives into your favorite new games. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like to appease the algorithm gods, and let me know in the comments what your favorite amulets have been, and whether you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.